Hi guys, so this afternoon I'm going to show you how you can write some automated tests to test your, your REST client. So what that'll do is it'll actually mock out your client and instead of sending the real HTTP request across the wire, what you're going to do is actually replace the HTTP request factory with a, a matchers request factory, so it's a Hamcrest matchers, and you're going to assert against that. So you can say, I expect a header to be in the payload or expect this or that and then Hamcrest will actually match that for you and you'll be able to have these really really great automated tests within your CI CD pipeline and that'll produce a lot of value because it means say if you're using authorization headers or um, for your basic authentication you know you can fire in that you can check that that header is present so let me get started here and I'll actually start showing you the code so hope you enjoy it in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how we can automate our client-side REST testing using Spring. So what we have here is our contract client. So this is a client that calls a REST service. And inside this client, what I'm doing is I'm adding some uh, basic authentication. So I'm adding the username and password. I'm getting a token. I'm then creating some headers. So I'm setting the content type to application JSON. And then I add the authorization header with basic and the token. So now we have our headers. What I then do is call actual to the actual service using REST operations. So I'm saying here's the URL that we want, which we inject in using the value annotation. We select our method, which is get. We pass in the headers. This is the class we, we expect back. And this is the contract number. So that's the path variable in the URL. So if you open up the resources, you'll see the URL is a path variable. So that's okay. And if you remember in the previous example, when I actually set up the REST operations, it's a REST template we created, and we created a client HTTP request factory, which is the underlying request factory that makes the HTTP connections. And we were setting the read and the connect timeout. Well, what we want to do is actually write some automated tests to test this service. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and actually create a test class. So if you copy the package name, go into source test Java, new class, paste in the package name, and then we want to call it contract client test. And click finish. Now you want to do is open up your palm. And you want to add in the Spring Framework Boot dependency for test. So add in the dependency of Tesco, Spring Boot Starter Test in Spring Framework Boot Group ID. Rebuild your application. So Maven update. And now we're ready to actually start writing our tests. So the first thing we want to do is select what we're going to run with. So yes, of course, we're going to run with the Spring J unit. Spring J unit for class runner dot class. And then we say we're a Spring Boot application. So it's Spring application configuration. And then we pass in our main class, which is app.class. So that's automatically going to scan, scan the hierarchy, scan the packages from app.class and look for any of our components, services, repositories, etc. And because we're annotated with component in our client, it's automatically going to pick that up. So that means we can automatically auto wire it into our class. So contract client. So now what we want to do is auto wire the rest template in. And I'll explain why in a second. And then what we want to do is auto wire in the service URL that we're going to be testing. So we're going to use the property again to bring that in. And now what we want to do is actually create a before method. So if you annotate out before, so this is going to run before J unit. We're going to call it setup. And this is where we perform our mocking. So if you've ever heard of the static factory method, so you've heard of mock rest service server, and you want to import that in, 
and then create server and we're going to pass in the rest template that we configured and we want to assign that as a mock rest service server so we're going to call it mock server now let me explain what that actually does so let me just bring it in here first Okay, so if you remember back in our actual REST configurations where we instantiated the REST template, well, we've actually passed in a client HTTP request factory. And what that does is sets the underlying request factory with the HTTP client request factory. And inside this request factory, if you look inside create request, this is where it actually creates the HTTP request to be sent over. And if you look inside HTTP com components, HTTP request, you can actually see in here that when it actually calls the method, so you can see execute internal, it's actually going to make the request. So there's the entity, there's HTTP client.execute, it gets the response and returns the response back. So as you can see, that's actually making a request and sending that over the wire with the headers, with anything we set on the request, the, the, the payload we send over, etc. So we don't want to do that because we're client-side REST testing and we want to make sure everything we do is mocked. So what the mock REST service server does is when we pass in the REST template, which is configured with that HTTP components one, what this will actually do is replace the request factory with the request matcher client HTTP request factory. So if you go inside there, you can see that when we actually call create request, it's not actually going to send, it's not actually going to create a real request that's going to send things over the wire. What it's going to do is create a request matcher client HTTP request and add it to the iteration, so the iterator. And if you look inside here, you can see now that all the really cool methods like and expect and respond and, and these are the methods that we will, we will actually call on the mock server. So I'll be demonstrating that in a second. And as you can see, when we actually call these methods, what we're going to be doing is actually adding a request matcher in. And the request matcher interface has a match. And what the, what we're going to actually do is pass in um, hamcrest matchers that are going to be added to that. So once I start showing you examples, you'll be able to see what I mean in a bit more detail. So let's actually write a test. And I can show you some examples. So we write test. You write public void, say client or contract request is contains headers. Or actually, we'll say contract request is correct. Now, that's a really bad test name, but for this mock demo, because we're going to be generic and assert on everything in the test, it's fine for this. So what we want to do is actually say our contract number, because as you remember, we had a, a path variable. So we're going to say contract number is five. And now what we want is your template handler. So if you go to Spring Web Util, and we're going to say your template equals the new default your template handle. And now what we want to say is string URI expanded is the URI template. We're going to expand it. So we're going to pass in the URL. And we're going to pass in the contract number. And then we're going to call dot to string. And now we have our resolved URI. So now what we're going to actually do is start starting on the mock server. So we're going to say mock server dot expect. So as you remember, I mentioned these methods earlier and what it takes in is a request matcher. And now what we want to do is import the hamcrest request matchers in. Well, they're actually spring framework mock request matchers. So if you go up to your imports, import them in. And now we're going to have really cool methods. So you can say dot dot expect. And we're going to say well, we want to request to 
and we're going to pass in the URI expanded. So now we say we want to request to this URI. So if we actually go in this request to method, you can see that it's it's passing in. It's going to return the request matcher, which remember we it's going to be asserted based on that iterator that I showed you that was inside the 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 request matchers factory. Well, as in here, you can see assert equals, and there's some ham crest asserts in here, like assert that. So there's the ham crest matchers. So you've got all these nice matchers that are going to match now on assert based on certain headers, certain values, expected URIs, and that's going to be all performed. And every time we call each method, and we're going to verify it at the end. So if this, if this still isn't making sense, I'm going to explain it all at the end. So we're saying we're expect a request to URI expanded. We're going to say and expect. Um, what we want is we're going to put in the HTTP method. So we're going to say HTTP method. Oh, HTTP method dot get. And I don't want to. I like to use static imports. And we're going to say and expect. Oh, sorry, I need to import that in. Oh, wrong method. Uh, where are you? Method, method, method. There, get away, Netty. We don't want a Netty server. We want the HTTP. And expect, we're going to say content now. So this is where we can specify the actual content type. Again, we need to go up and import content. So I'm going to just remove the, bring in all the imports. In my clips here, I have it, so I remove any extra imports. That's why they keep going away. Content type, and of course we want media type. dot application json and now we want to ex write a matcher on the header so let's say header http headers and we're going to use spring framework headers i'm going to say authorization and then what we're going to say is starts with. So what I'm going to have to do now is bring in the, the starts with um, method. So it's a ham crest starts with. So now we're going to say it starts with. We're going to say basic. So we want our header, that's, it sends authorization header to start with basic, because that's what it should start with. And now what we want to say is and respond. So this is what we're actually going to respond with. So we create a response creator. So now we actually need to import the mock request response creators in. And we need with status, so we can say we're just going to respond to with status. And now we can put in HTTP status. So we're going to put in HTTP status OK. And what we can also do is say what we're what the body's going to be. So we're going to say dot body. And if you paste in some of your JSON that you want to return to the client. So let me go ahead and copy some of mine over. So there's the JSON we expect. And then we can say what the, the content type is. So we're going to say media type application JSON. There we go. And we save that. 
So now we're saying we expect a request to the URI, which is the URI we inject slash five, and we expect it to be method get, and we expect the content type to be application JSON, and we expect the header of authorization to start with basic. And if that's true, what we're going to do is respond with the status of OK, the payload of this, and set the content type to application JSON. So now what we actually do want to do is grab our contract client is act and actually make the call on it. So we, if we go get contract and we pass in the contract number, and now what we want to do is click mock service or mock server dot verify, and that's actually going to perform the verification for us. So now if you run this test, run as J in the test. Cancel. I need to remove my imports. Save. Run as J in a test. So, okay, you can see now it's passed. So that's asserted that everything here is correct. So it's important we know how our test can fail to prove that this actually works. So if you go in the contract client and change basic to basics, in the authorization header and rerun the test. You should now see a, a failure as you do. Expected a string with basic but was basic. So of course now this this now allows us to make sure that we're actually sending the correct HTTP request over the wire and what we expect to send over the wire. So it's really really good and you're not actually sending it across the network of course you're just doing it through the matchers. So I hope this um, really helps people. I think it's fantastic um, in, in terms of functionality and, and the value it adds from an automated test perspective. So I'm going to quickly run through this whole thing quickly one more time. So we've injected a REST template. We've now called mock REST service server, created the server, passed our REST template in. What that does is replaces the HTTP request factory with a request matcher HTTP request factory. And instead of returning real HTTP requests, it returns the request matcher client HTTP request. So this returns method and expect and respond to us. So as you can see in our actual tests, we now say mock server dot expect and that returns us the, re the request and we can say and expect and expect and expect and respond. So this now gives us the nice uh, fluent builder API. And what that expects in is the response creator and the request matcher. And from our actual um, methods we've put in here, method, content, header, these are matchers. These are mock request request matchers. So if you actually open up these methods, as you'll see, they are from the mock request matchers. So if I go down to the actual request again, you'll see that it, 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 it returns a request matcher and inside that request matcher it implements match and it performs the assertion and then it, it performs the iteration of these of these request matchers in the request at the matcher request factory and when we select verify on our test so if I go back to the test we call verify, it asserts that the requests are not empty and the expected results equal the actual results. And if they don't, then we return an assertion error. So I hope that made sense. If it doesn't, you can replay the video and you can view all the spring documentation. Again, I like to open up the API and actually look at what it's doing and understand the internals of the frameworks rather than just relying on a black box. So I hope you enjoyed that. Hope it hope you use it and it adds value to your to your tests. And if you enjoyed the content today, please subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be releasing uh, three videos a week on average with great material that you can implement within your stack. So thank you for for watching again, and I'll I'll see you at the next video. Bye bye.